Welcome, thank you for tuning up to Knives. Today we have a very special video. Uh, uh, this is some uh, interesting footage that me and Mal caught uh, at the uh, 2011 USN uh, show uh, at the, in Las Vegas at the Plant Hollywood Hotel. Now first, uh, to know, okay, uh, uh, people have been asking me about Mr. Reeves. In the beginning, uh, there is a little, there, we did call him when we were on our way, because uh, it's been now almost like three weeks. And uh, he's still dodging us. Like I don't know. Like he, like I said, what happened was he he explained to me that he needs the knife because he can't have an unsafe knife out there, and he wants to evaluate it, possibly consider you know check if it's one of his employees that made a mistake, and you know see what was wrong. And I said, okay, fine. You know, you know, and then could you at least tell me what it is? And he said, oh yeah, ASAP. And he wants to get this resolved. Uh, and I mailed it to him, and he got it that following Monday, and you know, and nothing. Just uh, he's just been dodging me ever since. And uh, I had footage, but I, I used the DVD. I, we had brought two DVDs, re-recordable, and um, partway through the, the videos, uh, we had a chance to, uh, well, I had a chance to talk to Mr. Dwyer from Strider, and who started going over steels really in depth, and that uh, ate up about 20 minutes of time. So I, I opted just to get rid of that footage. Besides, I'd, I don't want to you know, piss Mr. Reeves off more, but the point is, He's got the Sabenza, and I like my I like the Sabenza. I mean, if if I could change the Sabenza, I would, you know, I don't know, I don't know. He's got my knife. I, I didn't really want to give it to him. Everyone's like, don't, but I don't, I don't know. That's all I gotta say. Uh, regardless, um, but I'll keep trying to follow that up. Next thing is uh, a little bit of a backstory. Okay, now the USN show. Uh, the Usual Suspects Network is a forum for uh, knife collectors, knife you know, people. Um, and it was started by a bunch of people who like Emerson knives, and uh, the the show is in Vegas usually because uh, it just tends to be that a lot of uh, uh, the people who are in the USN are located in Las Vegas. So uh, what happened was that they've been around for quite a while, and uh, Emerson, Mr. Emerson, has always been involved with them, and uh, the owner of Blade Art, uh, he hosts it. Uh, so it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Kind of kicked off, kind of slow. Um, Definitely different than you, you would. Ex I think you would expect. Um, like interesting things, for example, like um, the uh, none of them really know YouTube very well. They don't know the YouTube community much. Um, you know, I, w I was telling like uh, Tough Thumbs he should head out there, and uh, it's just you know it's like uh, they don't they don't recognize YouTubers. Uh, it's theirs is the form way of communicating their opinions. Ours is a uh, media or video, you know. And uh, but regardless, uh, you know it was. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. There was a uh, see. Uh, Lens Lie had like a bunch of uh, you know serious hooches running around in heels, you know, with alcohol, and um, a lot of knife makers were there. A couple that didn't make it, uh, was Mr. Thomas Warren Thomas. Uh, you know, he Mr. Thomas has a a, a story you know behind his, his life, and uh, uh, perhaps one day if he lets me, I'll tell that. But regardless, uh, you know, due to an injury, a pre-existing injury, he, he wasn't able to make it. Um, another favorite of mine, Martin Knives, didn't end up making it, and that was their chance to kind of more exposure towards the West Coast. Uh, and Chris Reeves, of course, didn't make it. Some of the other uh, vendors that I'd go over, uh, some things that, you know, discovered. And here's some eye candy, too, of some of the knives that we, we picked up. Uh, now, first, oh, well, first thing to say is, okay, uh, some, some people, you know, that, you know they, they ask, like, you know, perhaps, they didn't ask me, but they talk about it, is, are, like, am I rich or something, or me and Mel Rich? Um, I'm planning on posting a video coming up soon, in the, in the probably week, uh, that is going to go a little bit of background about uh, perhaps who I am and who, you know, me and Mel, basically Neptune Knives, uh, what we used to do before this. Uh, but we're not rich. Like I said, I'll get, in, I'll get into that uh, in that video. Okay, now the next thing would be, uh, oh, some buyer beware notes. We ordered some Deimoses. Okay, because I'm not a Deimos dealer yet, you know, a Fox Knife dealer yet. So, you know, because I still got to find more products that I could, you know, carry and perhaps find one that people like and test it. So we, we wanted to pick up some Deimoses, um, some black ones. And a, a Fox booth didn't seem to be doing very well. It was kind of dead. And uh, I ordered it from Knife Center, but they didn't have it in stock. Like they said, they back ordered it, but they sell it online. You can purchase it, but they don't have it in, in stock. And same thing with Diamond Back Knives. Diamond Back Knives. They, I tried to buy the EC uh, Survival Fire Striker thing, and the same thing. Now I know, you know, uh, some people, you know, that I consider friends, have friends that you know are, are you know, 
not here, but like on YouTube, uh, that want to, you know, they have knife businesses where they, you know, they're just linking it, you know, like they sell the product, but then they just, then the dealer just mails it, uh, the distributor, they don't actually have any inventory on them. And I can understand that because then you don't have to buy the inventory and have a lot of money to do that. But at, for what it is, I'm still going to say this, that it's not, it's, I don't think it's right to sell what you don't actually have. You can't really sell what you don't own, you know. And uh, so regardless, for me and Mel, it's a challenge to acquire uh, these dealership authorizations, you know, find the right companies, not piss them off. Um, and so I want to know, like, so my, for example, my background uh, is, okay, I'm not an engineer. I do have about the last four years, and before that, you know, just life experience, but four years as a, as a graphic designer. Um, but my uh, majors were psychology, and, uh, and for most of my life, it's been uh, also martial arts. So psychology and martial arts are my fortes. And design, I have a friend who I grew up with, childhood friend who's an aerospace engineer. Cool to know. Okay, now also I went to uh, Spyderco and Sal Glesser wasn't there, but Eric Glesser was. And uh, I got a chance to talk to him. He didn't want to be on video, but he said it's okay if I say this in video. Uh, there was two things he, he want. One thing he didn't want me to say, so I won't say it. But the one thing that he didn't mind was that he is, they do know about the military screws. Because when I said it, you could just tell he knew he was like yeah they they have been working on getting that one to have better screws a uh, bigger size or something so that's another point for Neptune that makes now uh, the DPX the military uh, it, it, one person even told me there's a blog about an umnum's now with a stabilizer disc I don't know about that but so that makes the military the DPX now so I'm not saying I'm always right but you know I am trying to per honestly give you guys some good information so uh, that was cool they had some prototypes I couldn't show. Uh, I did meet their distributor, and uh, when she sees my vids, I hope she doesn't get too upset because I do like Spyrico, and I don't know if I am able to sell them yet. But if I can, that'd be cool. Um, it was interesting to, to know. Uh, and then that moves. So, for example, oh, another guy. Okay, R.J. Martin. Sorry, Sue, but <laughs> R.J. Martin was an ass. He's an asshole. Okay, he's an asshole. Because I, I sat there at his table for like three minutes waiting to talk to him. He was talking to some other guy. He doesn't talk to like USN, he doesn't seem to talk to people. See, a lot of the people there, like Mr. Zool, they would go around and meet and greet and talk and just be friendly. Uh, RJ Martin seemed to only talk to the steel companies and knife makers, you know, like he didn't really seem to care about normal people. He didn't seem to very socialize, he didn't have anything for sale. I was like, what's, what's going on? I tried to, uh, so then I came back and I tried it again and the same thing. The guy didn't even acknowledge I was there, he just, I just sat there, stood there literally waiting for him to, to chat it up with somebody. I don't even know what they were chatting about, it wasn't like... I don't think anything important. It was something that someone he knew. Um, but regardless, okay, maybe that's just his thing. You know, that's his personality. But uh, for me, ugh, I don't know why I like it. Now, we did, there's some cool footage in this video you're going to see. For example, Rockstead knives. If you never heard of Rockstead knives, they're like made in Japan stuff and they're overpriced, a lot of people may think. But the truth is, if you go, okay, when you watch this video, you're going to see some amazing stuff. They, it's a Japanese brand where they use some kind of special high-speed tool steel. And the guy, he, he took the knife. Okay, he showed some cutting of hemp rope. Okay, you know, big whoop. He actually put the knife like, like this down on a phone book and pushed down just like that. And it went through the phone book more than once. And I was like, oh my god, like, <laughs> that was absurd. Um, you guys got to check it out in that vid. Rocks and knives, I mean, no joke. And if they disengage, I show that the finger, it won't cut your finger, but the steel, you, he says, you have a lifetime, they'll sharpen it after, it only takes, every two, three years, you have to send in to get sharpened, and they'll sharpen it, and then the rest is just dropping. I was like, whoa, so for a thousand dollars, you know, is it worth it? You know, it depends, they had Birch Tree Blade Work was there. Oh, I, I, Mr. Hinder, now, a couple of people we really got to talk to for a while, which is really cool, was a Ben Bowitteman, uh, he, check out his knife, I, I'll, I'll have stuff on this. Uh, DJ Urbanovsky, Mr. Burnley, Lucas Burnley. Now, hopefully, I didn't piss him off, but Mr. Burnley was really cool. We talked to him for a long, long time. Uh, he has this one knife that we're hoping. Uh, I'm hoping that he makes a production. He was talking about that, and and I had said some comments about Boker, you know, the, the China made stuff, and I think I upset him. But you know, hey, you know, Mr. Burnley, you know, it's your knife. Don't don't you know don't it's your name. If you go and make a Boker version that falls apart on people, you know, it's not gonna go well. So for you you know so regardless uh, Luca Burnley was really cool um, you know and Mr. Hinder so start with Mr. Hinder he was real laid back Mr. Hinder is really fun to talk to he's he's very laid back he he, he I, I don't know if he's gonna be mad if I say this but he had like Mardi Gras beads on and a rum and coke and he just loves to joke and stuff and uh, he he got a chance to look at the Hinder XM18 that I had 
in my testing, he said that what happens is the lock bar moves in when the pivot loosens. And so like, uh, that's, that's, it kind of picks up the slack and I was like, well, that's good, you know. I did get a chance to, you know, for example, people are like, why all those spine whack tests and stuff and, you know, um, sometimes like firefighters, you know, they have to get, to the, get through the wall and then they might consider using their knife and try to like break through the drywall, uh, you know, of course doors and stuff like that. So, you know, some of those uses. Um, we picked up a Hinder XM24. So this is going to go for sale on the website. Now, people think, why is a Hinder so expensive, right? Okay, and this is kind of a goofy finish. It looks kind of, I don't know, preppy, I don't know, aqua, you know, like for swimmers or something. But, okay, to get this knife, first of all, Mr. Hinder, he, you couldn't buy his knives. He had, I think, 50 with him, and he, he reserved 24, 25 each day for the raffle. And you had to basically fill up a raffle, and at the end, at a certain time of the day, wait in a crowd and hopefully calls your name, and then you had a chance to buy one of the... 25 that were up on the on the stage and uh, and so I had to rebuy this from another person who won so I mean that's that's how hard it is he didn't have only XM24 so he had a variety so it's like you know a person would have to go through waiting two days they'd have to travel to Vegas pay for a show put put into a raffle ticket and then wait for in two times you know try to win you know one of 25 knives each day and and then still have to pay for it just to be able to get an XM24 so why is it so expensive hinders are hard to get uh, a lot of knife makers actually is important to note. They didn't have much inventory. Uh, they had 12 to 24, 14 knives. I mean, um, I think people don't realize that when they, we're in the custom world, and this includes Strider, there there isn't a lot of inventory just around. I mean, Strider was sold out within like 19 minutes, and uh, Mr. Burnley sold out the night before. There was a lounge. Uh, it was like a night. You registered on Thursday, and then at nighttime you could go to like a bar lounge and mingle if you wanted to. And I guess Mr. Burnley sold everything at the mingling. I was there, but we left because it didn't. You know, I thought it wasn't the show. It seemed kind of mellow. That's when we got a chance to talk to Hinder. That's why he had the rum and coke. He didn't have the rum and coke during the show, but there was alcohol available. Uh, a couple interesting things too. Uh, well, GTC knives was there. And he does a really good job. But the thing is, I think USN people there tend to be more for tactical knives. Uh, Mr. Emerson. Man, he is in good shape. He's real friendly, uh, and uh, he had a, a bunch of customs that were only available for his raffle, um, and then his normal stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Also, I had a chance to look at Curtis knives, uh, the F3 and the Nano. The Nano wasn't centered on uh, a couple of them, and the F3, uh, you know, the lockup was kind of you know, all the way, like it was late, very late. And I, I don't know. I think this is it might be a little sloppy, and the price wasn't so high, so I thought, hmm. I mean, I don't really know. Um, Sniper Blade Works guy was nice. His knives were really overbuilt, but he was real nice. Very old-fashioned. Doesn't doesn't know much. No, he's not a computer guy. He was telling me. He says he grinds steel for a living. I did get a chance to talk to Strider, of course, and 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 that was really great. Uh, Mel and me were very happy about that. Uh, and Mr. Terzula, you'll see that. Um, and you know, I think people under understand that Strider really is a small company. Like, okay, Spider Co. You have. Eric Lesser and then two assistants, you know, uh, and one of them is their dealer lady, the distributor or the you know the seller. Okay, and then but when you ha go to um, Spider Co, I mean, I mean you go to Strider the table. I mean you're talking like Mick and Dwayne were there. I mean you know uh, Sal, I can't say you know but Sal Lesser wasn't there, but you know Eric was, you know, uh, but you know Fox owners weren't there, Boker wasn't there, you know, micro uh, Protect people weren't there. I mean the owners, you know, what I mean it was, but for Strider the owners were there. And uh, and that was really cool, you know. It, there, so you have to understand, they're a small company. Um, they, you know, I and I had a chance to talk to Mr. Dwyer about it and Mr. Tazula. So a couple things. So I did update the uh, Strider. Uh, should I buy a Strider video? With some interesting input now. Uh, more c definitely correct information straight from the source. Same thing with the Hinder. Uh, is it worth it? Video and the military failing. Now. Uh, so for example, I asked Mr. Tazula. I was like, hey, you know, uh, you know, what made you come up with the interesting lockup? So I want to clarify this. Strider did the lockup. Mr. Tazula did the design. So what that means is the credit goes to Strider. And uh, so that's pretty cool. And so I talked to, uh, you know, I got to see the prototype. I'm not sure if I got on footage, but the prototype of this, a lot of people have been asking about this. Okay. The, the actual version of this Strider is going to be smaller. It's going to be a three and a half inch blade, more EDC friendly, kind of has, a, has an Emerson thumb disc kind of you know, style. It looks like this. But it's the size of a, of a three and a half inch, you know, uh, kind of like an Emerson uh, Sabenza kind of style knife. Um, can't tell you what locking up what was like because it was just a slip joint at that point because it was just a prototype just to show. Uh, so then, you know, I talked to Mr. Dwyer about Vim Crew, you know, and this is the Vim Crew that I still have available on my site. And uh, I, I mean, because we, we ended up not selling it. And so then I was like, okay, you know, 
I'll relist it and I still have it. And I'm thinking, man, what, what, what am I going to do with this thing and how much am I selling it for? Well, I ain't going to lie, I don't want to sell it, so I'm going to raise the price real high because um, Mr. Dwyer, if you're watching this video, is really interesting. He talked a lot about what happened to Crucible, you know, which is kind of why Spyrco has been going towards the, uh, to using Carpenter Tool Steel Company. And he also explained like Vim Crew, Night and All. You know, there were only 50 Vim Crew blades he made, SNGs, available. And that's it in the world. And this, and, and then this Terzula Strider, there was only those 25 made, and that is it. For the rest, for the forever, that's it. I mean, maybe, I guess maybe they could just, you know, hey, I mean, it's their option, but I mean, Vim Crew Steel is no longer available, and uh, the production version is not like this. Uh, so, I mean, that really puts in perspective how rare, you know, Striders can be. Um, so, they're definitely more collector items than I realized. Mr. Broadwell, David Broadwell, he has this knife called Arachnophobia, really cool, kind of like a hinder, but way more expensive, but done, you know, in a kind of a classier way, less of a tough way but uh, he explained the limits of those built-in frame of uh, the stop pins when they're not when there's not a pin but uh, not, not good on this knife I don't have no pin ones here well here the, you know, the BBR one uh, when the stop pin you know is actually inside of the blade like to, to you know it's built in so he says link again that so he's saying that he might make me and Mel uh, a more robust version uh, with the stop pin exposed for outdoor use so that's interesting to learn uh, here's the BBR one got two of them right here I got a couple actually these now this is another thing Bastinelli Ah, uh, Miss Monsieur from London and, and Mr. Bastinelli, uh, they're really cool. Mr. Bastinelli is really quiet because he doesn't speak English, and, and I can't watch either their channel really because it, you know, I watch. I'm, I subscribe to Bastinelli because he shows his knives, but I don't understand either of them because they're French, and so I, I can't. You can't really watch them. For, so for American viewers, you know, that's rough. But this BBR one, I got one that was black coated. These are all numbered. They only made 75, and they're thinking they may not make anymore. Of course, unless demand's super high. So what that means is now you got this BBR one folder. It's also very rare, and uh, each one comes with a certificate. So, uh, you know, but then people are like, oh, it looks very similar to DPX test. Okay, now the reason is that because they're made by Lion Steel in Italy. Both the DPX and the Bassinelli BBR1. Uh, basically, the, the DPX, uh, Mr. Robert Young Pellington, and then Mr. Bassinelli, they outsource who was going to make it to, to Lion Steel. So the, and Lion Steel has a sort of general standard of what they're going to do. They're going to do this method. Uh, so that's why it came, comes out like this all the time. But like I said, you know, I have a couple of two black ones, an orange one. This one's all blacked out. It's pretty cool stuff. And I'll do those following reviews on those two. I'm supposed to be an authorized dealer for a DPX, but it's looking like I don't think so because I guess maybe they saw my website. I don't know what, but when you're on their good side, they'll email you fast. But I didn't do anything wrong, but maybe they saw my videos and so now I'm on the rad side. Uh, it may be that I don't carry DPX knives because you know whatever they're sissies they don't want to man up <laughs> but right you know but regardless Bassinelli's are cool and I picked up one of their fixed blades I'm going to review this too so here's some cool stuff man now this Mr. Bassinelli uh, he has training as a as a fighter so in, in some kind of combat training I, I'm going to have to talk more about that but as you can tell in his design he has first of all one of the more interesting things is this secondary way to secure the knife silent you know and then of course he does this not everyone does that so I picked up a Bastinelli, this is the Raptor. This is really cool. Man, it's got some videos of that, so I'm going to do a review about this one. This is Mel's knife. Uh, we got, oh, I picked up a, from Knife Rights, uh, hit buttons right here. I picked up a, a, a prototype, one of 13 uh, Swamp Rat, uh, Boosie Swamp Rat from one of the board members. Uh, the, the difference between the, origin, the production and this prototype is the, the prototype is one inch longer. So it's actually kind of like the Uber version of the knife. And then, um, you see also, uh, oh, uh, then there was this, uh, there was a guy, uh, John Grismo, uh, Grismo, uh, he made, uh, some, uh, special Mannix 2s. Look at that. With the custom, these are aluminum, uh, scales. Because JG, so I'm going to review on, on this soon. This is, like, gorgeous. I, I got this for sale on the site. Uh, it's like a special, well, I'm going to probably lower the price a little bit down to, like, I don't know. Well, down a little bit, you know. But just contact me and stuff. But this is this is something that's really awesome. I like. I'm I'm gonna have to get one of those now for myself. Oh, DJ Urbanowski, uh, he has some uh, pretty wicked knives and uh, but uh, they're they're more larger size. But he created a, a spork. So okay, Snow Peak is what I had on my website. So you have to understand, me and Mel were on the search for better stuff. Um, this is the a better version because he says this if you test it it'll bend when you scoop ice cream this one he, he adds all kind of features to the can openers like that and it's much more strong they're anodized so that's really cool gear uh, oh, oh and a lot of knife 
all the custom knife makers, a lot of them had Boker Vox Pry Tools, the access tool that I sell. And I was like, man, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's just cool because, you know, that... I don't want to say because it, it reaffirms I have good taste, but that was really cool to see that a lot of them, like Mr. Bewitterman, had them. And uh, Ben Bewitterman, his knives, uh, if you look on the site, his show ones have like way more, like they're insane. They, he sold out fast. They had all these custom graphics. I mean, they, they just, they have all this acid splash patterning. It's like amazing. Lightning Strike, Tritium, I mean, this is everything. Uh, he only sells them of those at his show, so if you want one of the special Bewitterman's, you have to get it at a show. Uh, and uh, he's going to make me one. So, I hope, I hope I got everything. Here's a Strider, a uh, little cool special Strider, uh, SMF, custom one, just for the show. Uh, again, for sale. Uh, really smooth. Uh, I hope I got everything, and so, I hope you enjoyed this video. Anything I miss, I'll annotate. And, uh, uh, until next time.